we got this Nissan Aria brand new 2024 for a dash camera installation we're going to uh, we're going to be installing a Viofo A229 plus and the rear camera add-on with the hardware cable so first things first we want to actually put on some safety garments that way we don't uh, rub anything against the rear bumper so it's just some protective gear and going into the, the vehicle here as well just want to make sure to put proper seat covers on to actually protect these seat covers are actually from pro cover you can get them in the uk uh, we've got them particularly from them we've recommended to a few other people as well um, but yeah either way it's going to protect the seat while we work on it just in case we have any dirt or anything that we bring in when we're working on the vehicle so one of the things we want to kind of dial in is where are we going to place this dash camera so we have this here and typically people don't want to see it I mean you have the driver's steering wheel right here so it's a question of where do you want to actually mount this dash camera if we put it here it's going to be right in front of their face most people want it over here on the passenger side and that's what I would recommend doing is actually putting it over here passenger side it's behind the rearview mirror and now if you're in the driver's seat you're not going to see it because it's completely hidden behind the rearview mirror and then we can actually take this paneling off and tuck the wiring right up here into this panel so let's start now that we know where this one's going let's start and install this dash camera and as you can see we did some prep we used to use some nice tessa tape that way it keeps all the wiring together and we can easily hide it and tuck it behind the uh, housing behind the rearview mirror and it'll go up a little ways into the headliner so we want to actually pull off the a pillar so i'm just using my 4140 to actually bend in so that i can take this off as you can see it just comes out quite easily there is a little support here that's actually holding it in it's like an airbag retainer clip this comes off quite easily with just a phillips screw And so you have this here too. So this here, you just have to kind of uh, bend it. So you can get it out. Then we usually just take this and rest it here like this because the fabric is just, yeah, it's not going to cause any damage. You obviously don't want this leaning against any console because then you could possibly scratch it or cause any kind of damages so very important so now we have the airbag as you can see wide open and we actually have cabling run in behind so what we're going to end up doing is as we run the wiring we're going to actually tie strap directly to this wiring in behind the airbag that way it's safely so that when this airbag deploys on an angle it's not going to hit the wiring. A lot of people are running the wiring over top of this and ends up causing a problem. So we're just going to drop this plate in behind the rear view mirror. It just has a couple clips. Um, So what I like to do is not unplug this because this has the airbag right here. As you can see, it's got the airbag light. So if you actually end up unplugging that, typically you're going to end up with an airbag code on your dash. And airbag codes on the dash kind of suck to clear. So we always just kind of leave it, unfortunately, hanging. Now, it's not really the best way, 
but it is a way where we don't have to deal with any headaches of it going back to the car dealer or end up having any issues where uh, the customer has to go and pay and, and create a, a bad customer experience. So we always make sure to try and do that. On all the Nissans, we do it that exact way. And even I just did a Mitsubishi before this, and the Mitsubishi Outlander has a very similar uh, bezel with the airbag light built into it. And we always, like I said, we make sure not to unplug that at all. see the wires all ran now we just lift it pulled down a little bit make sure your hands are obviously clean because if they're dirty you're gonna end up transferring especially on a white headliner very hard to keep clean so you can see right here we're running the wire in behind see in behind not over top, in behind the airbag. So as you can see, we're gonna take the tie straps, and we're just gonna tie strap this wiring right here. This is for the uh, hard wire cable then we want to just cut these tie straps cut And as you can see, right, ran directly here. So we'll be able to put the panel back on safely and nothing is in the way of the airbag at all, right? Got the weather stripping pulled back. We're just gonna tuck this up here. This is the rear cable. Uh, do not tie strap this wire at all some people think you need to tie strap it but what, what are you going to tie strap it to up here you can't really tie strap it to to anything we've seen sorry, we've seen people who have tie strapped directly to the airbag do not do this that is a major mistake Take this grommet here so there's actually no tabs on this so these actually just come off easily they're just rubber pull so they just come out and then we have to actually take this off too now and this is quite big So as you can see right there, just some clips, comes clips right off. In order to take this panel off, you're gonna have to unclip this. And always just make sure to put that through the hole again when you come back with it, right? Just usually put that in the back seat, nice and safe.
is why it's great to have specialty tools. Some of these vehicles are not as friendly for do-it-yourselfers. That's for sure. So yeah, typically if we're gonna be running a wire through the rear grommet, which as you can see, it's rubber. Some people might use like a tie strap, they might use coat hanger. You know, it's really up to you and how you do it. We, we have these specialty tools that we use. This one's called a MEG 20. It comes from uh, Vim tools. Uh, they're a little expensive, they're a little bit on the pricey side, but I do love how flexible they are. And the fact it's coated, right? And you can actually hook two of these together and extend them and make them longer. So it helps us get through a, a lot of situations when trying to do an installation. Helps with our efficiency. I've had uh, certain people tell me that I must be doing a bad job if I'm doing it that quick. But really it comes down to the tools that you're using. And uh, I've actually shown a couple guys that, hey, I use these tools and it helps us get things done quicker. Uh, because I've actually seen people online spend over half an hour like at professional shops trying to use like uh, a tie strap to run it through, right? So as you can see, I already, I already have it through. Not too long. Like I said, you wanna use a tie strap, you can use a tie strap. You wanna use a coat hanger, I wouldn't recommend a coat hanger just cause it's be pointy, you could probably pierce one of those wires when you're running it through. But hey, there's all sorts of different methods that you can use to get it through. Um, you could, you know, try lubricating up like like some wire like this and running it through but either way this is kind of how we usually do it most of the time you just want to make sure to put the rubber grommet back on here nicely Now we have this wire through, just like that. So we wanna make sure this comes through here. So we're gonna tie strap up the excess wire. See, it's all nice and tight in there. Okay, so we're gonna continue assembling the back of the vehicle here. And as you can see, we wanna run this through the hole and the green connector through the hole. These are going to squish up. There we go. All back in place. This is going to clip in just like so. And then we have this uh, adapter here.
So we can do a little incision, but we haven't asked the customer for authorization to put a little incision, so we're not going to do that. We are going to run it like so, just because otherwise it's going to fall off, right? It's not going to clip in all the way, right? So. have it just come out here for now if he gives us authorization we'll put a little small incision and then we can have the wire look a little bit more beautiful personally if it was my own vehicle I'd do a small incision right there just that that way the cable is a lot more hidden just gonna clean the rear window with some antiseptic wipes and as you can see the rear camera is mounted and we'll have to adjust the angle after we log into it again Now put this back in place. Okay, so we have the fuse box here and we want to figure out where we want to get constant power and ignition from. So what we like to do is look at all these empty. So as you can see, here's an empty one that has constant 12 volt. Another one, another one. These all have, these all have constant 12 volt. So this is an easily a safe place to go for hooking up constant power for your dash camera. Now the other thing is we need to get an ignition. So none of these have any power. But let's see if we turn the ignition on. Do any of these remarkably so this one here has power and now if I switch the power off it goes dead so right here we can grab ignition right and it's an empty fuse slot so we got an empty one here constant power over here okay so the fuse box is now in we have the constant power over here in the blank and ignition power over here in a blank and then if you look up here this is the ground which this is the cross beam going across the vehicle it's very solid we use self-tapping screw and it's completely grounded right there for the dash camera and now we're just going to reassemble this area okay so we have the a229 plus just sitting here it's just hanging here loosely with the power cord and the rear camera cord plugged in right now and we're just going to start the vehicle up make sure it starts up make sure the dash camera starts up and as you can see it's powering up with no issues at all just set up the time zone We're going to take some antiseptic wipe. We're going to clean the windshield where it's supposed to be mounted. And then we're going to take some paper towel, clean off the mounting area. 
that way it's nice and clean It's all nicely mounted. It's all nicely mounted here on the front windshield of Yofo A229 Plus. And you can see all the wires are hidden. The A pillar's back on, it's all hidden in behind. And in case you're wondering where we went and got power, it's actually the glove box here, which there are a bunch of torques to take off here at the top and there's a couple torques here at the bottom three at the bottom three at the top the reason why we didn't record this portion is just because on this particular vehicle you know most people's vehicles they have registration and information in there and we just didn't want to have uh, any of that information available by accident on YouTube but either way that's a Nissan Aria uh, Viofo A229 Plus front rear dash camera installed.